Hey friend, this is my heavily customized e-bike that I've purpose built for summoning mountains. I've uh, converted it to dual motors. It's all wheel drive. It's got a bigger battery. It's got storage capacity. And the first storms of the winter moved through the Fraser Valley and we got dumped with snow. So I'm gonna take this guy on its maiden winter voyage and uh, hopefully, hopefully summon a mountain in the process. <laughs> You could actually see it from on top of my container. So that over there is Mount Sham. And that is the mountain I wanna go up. I wanna sleep right on top. And it's the mountain that I look at almost every single morning and I get so excited this transition into winter when we see the first blankets of snow up there. And I went and camped up there, up there last year and I made a bunch of mistakes, I did a lot of things incorrectly and uh, <laughs> the trip turned out quite eventful. So this, uh, this time around, I'm hoping for a little bit of a redemption run and we're gonna do a couple things differently. For one, uh, the tent was a bit of a struggle last time in the crazy wind, so, so we're just not gonna bring a tent this time. And then two, I wanna try to take the electric bike up instead because uh, that just sounds fun, different and exciting for me, so. My alarm is set for four in the morning. I'm gonna go sleep for a couple hours. Let's uh, let's cut to the riding up sequence. Let's do this. It's game time. I'm I'm pumped. Hey friend, good morning. <laughs> it's been a long cold journey so far. And we've just encountered our first our first real obstacle. So this uh this morning's journey started off decently cold and uh I've made my way up through the river valley this morning and the e-bike has actually been performing incredibly well aside for one uh, massive problem. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure at this point, you might be able to chuck it down in the comments what you think it might be. I had assumed what I was gonna run into first was traction, which is why last night I prioritized building chains for the bike. Um, I wasn't sure how slippery the roads were gonna be uh, because the snow melts and refreezes usually a couple times early in the year. So before there's a base, it can be quite slick, like kind of like a skating rink. So I built those chains, assuming that was gonna be the first problem I ran into. Uh, the problem I've ran into is that uh, we are low on the battery. And you might guess, well, Levi, did you not expect that to happen? I did. <laughs> uh, I was optimistic. And the reason why I was optimistic is that I've never ran out of battery on a trip with this new setup that I've built before. So ever since I customized and rebuilt the battery, I just haven't ran out of power on any trip. 
I didn't know how to account for basically an additional 80 pounds of gear on the bike that I'm used to traveling with on normal hills. So that additional weight uh, requires more torque, more uh, watts out of the motors. And essentially with both the motors pulling off the battery, I'm voltage sagging below where I'm comfortable pushing the battery at this point. And I still wanna leave some battery to do the run out. So the low voltage has become more of an issue in this last half hour of steeper stuff. So I'm not sure how well this kind of translates to camera, but some of these switchbacks are getting quite a bit steeper. But now we've come to the point where we are going to unload the bike. The sun is just starting to peek over the mountain over there. And I am very excited to feel its warmth. Lady, uh, lady's looking all right today. This has been a, a beautiful development to the day. Holy smokes. This is just completely stunning up here. This is, uh, this is more beautiful than I was expecting, certainly, when I started this morning. Let's check here. Total elevation traveled so far today is 1,026 meters. Whew! That's like 3,000 feet-ish. Uh, and it's at this stage of the journey where I believe we have arrived at our second obstacle. And the second obstacle was one that I was anticipating, but not sure exactly what the best method of planning for it was. And that is, uh, there's more snow up here than I thought, which honestly is exciting. That makes me, uh, that makes me more happy than anything, but it's changing some of my, uh, my summit objectives. Looking at the pileups over at the barriers at the parking lot, it looks like it's a solid three feet at least, and it's uh, gaining as I go further. So that's just a touch more snow than I was expecting. Let's talk and we're losing daylight. I think I got about an hour-ish left, hour plus before the sun's below, below the horizon.
a pretty 10 out of 10 day to spend in the mountains if I do say so. I've been uh, kind of getting psyched about a, about a summit mission. That's what I've been thinking through. I was gonna camp, camp lower and then go fast and light tomorrow and push up uh, across the ridge line there. And uh, one specific thing has made me change my mind. The route that I'd be taking tomorrow would go right across the, the face there. And I don't know how well you can tell from video, but that is a, uh, that is steep and steep terrain with a bunch of snow on it like that uh, does mean avalanche territory. And especially traveling solo, my decisions around traveling through where avalanches might occur definitely changes. <laughs> Uh, and what solidified my decision was in my approach here, uh, I crossed an avalanche path. Let go up there and tumbled and gained momentum down to here. Nice little class one. Looks like we got an example of just rapid loading and the weight of the snow on itself didn't have enough to hold on to the steep train and it let go, took some snow with it. My guess is that this uh, is about two weeks old, uh, mainly just because we had a lot of a lot of precipitation about two weeks ago. And then there's a light dusting of snow on top of it, which would seem to make sense. So that kind of uh, solidified for me any questions I was having about summit objectives tomorrow. Well, I have something in my bag I was going to save for a summit because I thought that would be kind of fun. But seeing as we're not going to do that anymore, I brought up a Lagunitas IPA. And this is, uh, is going to taste very great. And you might be asking, why didn't you take up a can or something practical for the mountains? And the reason for that is that I wanted to tell you about these sweet surfboard coastal inspired bottle openers that uh, we've been making with Left Coast Supply Co. I am really excited about this. Let's pick. Ooh. This is the beer from California, so sticking uh, in the surf theme. We've been working hard away at these and I personally think they're beautiful. My dad's just been toiling away in the shop. And so for the next week, if you're wanting to get a, a rad gift, a handmade gift uh, for Christmas for someone, uh, this comes in a set with a coaster and I think it's a, a pretty rad addition to the Left Coast Supply Coast store. Of course, that's named after my production company, Left Coast Media House, and I wanted to keep expanding it, obviously with the t-shirts the and the sweaters and stuff like that. And, I want to make some more handmade stuff as well. So if you have ideas of things, let me know. Yeah, it's kind of exciting. So if you want to support the channel, that's a great way you can do that. So the sun has now dropped behind that mountain over there and it has <laughs> gotten a lot colder uh, quite quickly. This time we're going with a bivy instead of a tent. So this is just a bivy bag. And essentially what that is, is like a, like a jacket for your sleeping bag essentially. So this combo all together here should actually keep me warmer than if I was sleeping in my tent. And the reason for that is with the Gore-Tex bag, close around the sleeping bag, it'll actually be able to hold in and insulate heat a little better. It's gonna be a little bit more claustrophobic, but that's kind of normally how it goes. And I, and I don't really know how to do this going forward, but clarifying the difference between uncomfortable cold and deadly cold. Oh, my water bottle's already freezing shut. That's great. Um, but I mentioned several times when I was up here last time that I was cold. And I don't know how else to reference this, but there, there's a big difference to me at least between uh, uncomfortable cold 
and getting cold to the point where uh, I'm gonna get hypothermic and it's actually a problem. Because I don't know about you, but anytime I've ever gone up a summit or top of a mountain, Every single time I've done that, I've been cold at the top. <laughs> and the main reason for that is you're sweating on the way up. So you get to the, you get to the top and you get, you get cold because your sweat cools you down. Talking about temperature thing, I need to be, I don't know how best to do that into the future because I don't want to mislead people to think that I'm, I don't, I don't know how to handle that. This is the weird line when you're making videos of adventures that have risk where I don't want to, I don't want to downplay it, but I will be clear to you that if I'm making risk assessment type decisions, I'm making those in the 90% of time where the camera is off. <laughs> <laughs> look how icy the sleeping bag is. Doesn't that uh, doesn't that look inviting? Doesn't that look so nice? Sparkly. Uh, this is one of those moments where I want to let you know that I'm cold, uh, but on an uncomfortable cold, not a not a deadly cold. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna finish boiling my last uh, pot of water to finish my water bottle to get this sleeping bag hot. And then I'm going to crawl into it. And I'm not going to hit record, climb in, pretend like I'm sleeping, get out, stop recording, do that whole process and take off my boots. Um, you're just gonna have to use your imagination, okay? I, uh, I was in my little sleeping tube from 6.30 is when I crawled in last night and I didn't get out until 7 this morning. <laughs> it's not that I was having uh, that amazing of a sleep, but I just did not want to get out into the cold, so I just kind of stayed in there. Well, even though I didn't uh, get the summit objective I came up here for, uh, this trip certainly wasn't a failure so far. I think I'm still gonna fine tune and tweak a few things. Um, I'm just always grateful to be out in the, in the snow. It's, it's really nice. It, it does push me to be spending a night in the snow. Surprisingly, based off how cold it was the last three nights, uh, it's warmed up a lot here down in the valley. Um, and that's what the forecast called for. I am gonna try and baby the last few percent I have left and uh, 
Let's give me some pedaling on the flat. Ah, we have power. Uh, let's see. There we go. Well, it's been fantastic to have you. Thanks for joining me on this uh, adventure. If you want something to watch next, I've got, again, a playlist of other winter adventures. If you want to learn filmmaking, I've, I've got a series of 30 adventure filmmaking tips that you can sign up for. Um, all a part of the Adventure Film Academy, the school I run. And of course, Left Coast Supply Co. If you want to get a sweet winter gift, head over and do that. Winter gift. Christmas gift. <laughs> uh, that's going to be it for this one. Thanks so much for watching. And remember, life's better when you make stuff. It says it on this container right here. It says life's better when you make stuff. I'm serious about it, okay? I'm not messing around. <laughs> okay, peace.